Hi, I'm Juanita from Nearby Artisans, and I have tried to make this video a couple of times, but there is so much to sketch that every time I have made one so far, I've ended up going into some very intricate and elaborate things. So I'm going to do the video on sketch and using sketch for creating paths in a couple of series. The first one is just going to be introducing you to sketch and even though you already might know sketch there's some really fantastic things you can do with it in turning it into a path for fill. If you're already familiar with sketch then you probably wouldn't want to watch this video but it could be fun anyway. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over some of the things that sketch has. I'm going to take this heart right here and I'm going to convert it to a path and to, to show you the things that are in here. The first thing here in Sketch, and Sketch, you get it from this little, this right here is the icon for Sketch. Now I have the Business Edition. Um, if you only have the Standard Edition, this might be just, this would probably be right here on your menu and not within another one. So, uh, and if not, you can always go up to Panels and find Sketch that way. So, I'm going to open up the Sketch window. This first one turns it back to blank, takes away anything that you've done in there. However, do keep a copy of whatever you're working on because it is unpredictable when you get into these and that you think you, you erase it, but it's still there, uh, or something is still there. So just keep yourself a copy. This one here will turn the design it puts little squares here. There's a lot of things you can do with the squares. This is intended for the um, machines, the silhouette to um, have a marker or gel pens or whatever in it and to make uh, crosshatch type marks to give it a fill. This, I'm going to use this for a cross stitch pattern. And that'll be in a, in a, in a video after this. Um, and when you're using this, you can control the spacing of the squares as well as the angle of the squares. Like you could have a little diamond shape here instead of the um, horizontal and vertical squares, but I'm just gonna leave it with the squares and that's what they would look like. Now I can get them pretty pretty large and um, again use this as a thing for cross stitch or whatever by using it as a printout. I This right here is what I'm going to work with mostly and it creates lines and these lines are again for fill for a pen or a marker I'm going to use them as paths you can have the lines further away or closer together and I'm going to show you how you can even have it much further away than that you can have it on an angle if you wanted to have designs that came down in a, in a particular angle there um, I'm just going to leave that at zero. This one here is like um, offset, internal offset. It will just create another ring and another ring and another ring. And um, this is great to use for paths to keep uh, a shape here. You could put text around this or you could put a design around this. You could have little hearts. You can have sayings. Um, and you can also break this up. I'm going to show you that later on, how to break this up and use like sections of it, which will be really neat to, to do. Um, and again, you can control the width of this, of the lines here, this way, and then another way I'm going to show you um, after we go through all of these. This one's really neat. This creates a spiral. And you can see the spiral that co comes in and then it goes out. And when it comes out through here, it recognizes this here as continuing. It wouldn't, um, it's not going to stop right there and not go on. It's going to go on. Um, I can show you how to make that go on and work right. And I'm going to show you how to um, break this apart so that it only goes from here to here and then goes from here to here. Um, and so that you have some more control. But both ways are nice. This gives you a pretty much a back and forth zigzag and it goes all the way down and then when it gets down here it kind of goes straight up to here 
And you, you don't see that when you're looking at it, but when you're putting a design on there and you're using this as the path, you can see your, your um, shape going down and then up, and we'll go over that on how to get around to that. <clears throat> this one here, this gives you little circular motions. Like sometimes when you're using a crayon or, a mar or a marker and you really want to fill in an area or you're using a pen or a pencil, you kind of do little circular motions. That's what this does. And this is to give you a nice fill if you're doing um, print and cut or you're cutting on cardstock um, or printing on cardstock. And this is a nice print and cut feature. Or you can use it for sublimation. Um, and um, um, you could use this for printable vinyl. This one gives you a nice diamond shape. And I don't know why they have the diamond shape like that because if I was were doing this, I would have had the diamond shape be like a diamond, like right there, I guess. Uh, yeah, right there. Um, and this it gives a nice diamond shape. You could use this as a pattern, print it out, and use it as a pattern for um, a, a quilt or for an applique piece or for one of those miniature quilts if you wanted a heart shape. Um, cross stitch, I mean, I think there's a lot of uses for this. I would use it for a fill. I don't can't imagine that I would use this for um, to create a path. This is definitely a fill. This is going to take the marker or the pen in your machine, and it is going to just go over it. Let me put this at zero so you can see how it originally uh, starts. So if you had a marker or a pen in your uh, machine, it's just going to go back and forth to fill this in. That's what these are. However, this looks kind of nice for a um, if you're doing text, uh, and that the, the, you can have this shape. But of course, you could have this, and you could just take text. You could have this as like a watercolor or something, and take text and just put it over it and crop. But it's kind of neat to do it this way too. This gives you a thicker um, thing, and to to um, uh, It'll go pretty solid fill. And this is definitely a fill. But like I said, this is nice for shapes. I did this in a um, on a on a um, shirt and used the school name, the CHS, and it, it just turned out kind of neat how it had the. I did an angle. It was just kind of neat how it did the like that, uh, how it like looked like someone had just done some markings on there, and and I liked it. Um, Put this back. Now see, that's what I meant. Sometimes they don't go back to um, what they were to save a copy. So now I have my original heart again. These are edge effects. And this is the, gives you the blank, puts you back to um, your beginning of the edge effects. This is just a regular uh, plain edge. This is something like that and what this will do is your marker it'll just go around and then it'll be slightly off and go around again and that's kind of neat and you can of course um, control it up with spacing and angle this gives you kind of a, a bleed of a of a um, make it uh, thicker this gives you just kind of a little bit of a bleed and then this one gives you more of a bleed and then this one gives you that spiral, uh, spirally uh, thing around, around the, just the edge. This gives you even more. And I guess that's more narrow. And I'm going to go back to none. Whenever you do any of these, these um, things, in order to, once you're finished using them, you want to do the release effects. But I'm going to show you what you can do with these this um, by releasing the effects of it. Now if I have a heart and I have these lines and this works with all of them. This works with this one. I, actually this one uh, is more obvious so I'll do this one here. Now as I go in and out I'm going to make it be kind of far. Now as I go in and out you can see that I'm getting more or less lines based on the size. That's how it increases and decreases the size. It gives me just more, um, just like the internal offset. The internal offset, if you want it bigger, 
you just keep creating, uh, you just do more offsets. That's what I like about this versus the internal offset, though, is that I have the control of deciding without creating them, deleting them, creating them. I could just pull this in, pull this out, and decide. Now, based on the width of my image that I can kind of put over there, if say if I'm going to go ahead and do hearts inside of this, like this one right here, I want to have the width of this be um, wide enough for a paw print, and then, you know, another paw print without them running into each other. So it looks like I would have this line and this line. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to release effects. And now when I pull this out, my lines are getting further apart. I'm not getting just more of them. It's not just building inside. It's just pulling the lines out. It keeps the outer shape. And it keeps the shape inside pretty good. But I just have more space now in between for my um, smaller designs. So that's the difference of the release effects. If you want to keep having the effects of that and you want it to stay and keep building, um, keep that until you're happy with it. If you want, if you know I really want wide lines, now you could get wider lines here in this um, advanced, but we'll do advanced in the next video. I'm only going to show you a few things in this video uh, so that it doesn't get too long. One of the things I am going to show you here is how to use these lines now, instead of them being sketch lines for markers, how to use them as a path. So I'm going to go over and get my grab handle. I'm going to pull this up onto this heart and see what I meant about how it's a little unpredictable. Like So this, what this does is it started here and came down and then went around and it, it didn't it, it the marker is going to stay um, it looks like the marker if I actually was drawing this wants to stay on the paper but I don't think it does but I'm never going to use this for a um, for a sketch this isn't this just isn't something that I would use for fill I'm going to use this to create a path so I'm going to go ahead and for my path I want to see these dog feet like, see, now these are kind of the same. I like I like how that looks, but then when I get down to here, they kind of want to jumble up. I'm going to try to smooth this out some by using these little um, grab handles, or I can also use these over here. And I'm going to go ahead and... I think I'm going to go ahead and change the um, angle on them. Go ahead and have them be per perpendicular. And I, you can see them twisting around a little bit. It's not changing the... I, like I don't want this right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and leave it there, release copies. And now I can go in and I can kind of hand place these. So it's a lot better than trying to um, place these. And it took just a second to make that path um, versus trying to make it uh, by doing the internal offset so many times. And I think I'm not going to do the outside edge anyway because I want to um, keep that for a, a nice border. So I'm just going to pull these in. And I'm just going to do the, some hand placements. And yeah, I, there's a lot of ways that I could do this. And you're probably thinking of so many different ways. But this to me is just easy. And I don't mind moving these around a little bit. I have my line still to stay on the path. But there's an, another way to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And again, I'm only going to show you for now the lines and the um, offset. I'm not going to really go into the other ones. That's going to be another video. So I'm going to go ahead and create my heart again. And I do have this um, business edition software that gives me all these neat tools. And you should look into that because they're, it's just great. If there was a reason to upgrade to business edition, it's right here.
And I'm going to have a video with all of those because there's so many things that they that, that will do. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my, uh, go to my, um, my, line, my, my um, sketch panel and uh, line effects it says. And I'm going to just do, I'm going to go ahead and do that again. I'm going to release the effects. And now I'm going to release compound path, which now is going to turn each one of these lines into an independent line. I'm going to get rid of this little center, and I'm going to get one of my dog uh, paws. I'm going to go back and get my um, grab handle. And now I only have to deal with one at a time. I don't have it going all through. And I'm going to go ahead and say um, that I want these to have um, increment angles. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I kind of like that look. And now I'm going to release copies. I'm going to, I'm going to get, because I do like the placement of this and I'm happy with it, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this line because the grab handles are like super strong magnets and they want to grab onto anything they pass. So now I'm going to get myself another um, dog paw, pull it over. I'm going to get those um, start position, want those to join, and now I'm going to kind of uh, roll this around and see where it fits best, and I think I'm going to move it a little tiny bit, so I'm getting paws in between mostly, and I'll go in and clean that up a little bit, but I'm going to get rid of this because I'm happy enough with it that I don't need that to have my placements, and um, get my grab handle, and I'm going to pull that around. Get to how I like it, release copies, pull out that, and now I just have these two. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, get myself another dog paw, show grab handle, pull it onto there, onto this one. I'm going to um, get my length all the way around. Click on this. Um, I think I want less of them this time. Use copies. Get this one. And now I just have this uh, this one left. So I'm going to show grab handle, pull it over. I'm going to get my section length so that it's all the way around until it joins. And I don't think there's much I can do here with how far apart they are. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one. And then I can see that one of them, sometimes the first and the last ones are the same. And you can tell because it's extra uh, uh, dark. So now I have these. And now I can go in and I can move them around a little bit. And even though I have to do some of this placement, it just beats putting these all in. I like the random look. Yeah, I could go in and I could say I want five down and four over and all that, but then I'm going to get an exact um, exact lines and I just want it to have more of a random look because I like that. And now if I were going to do um, a card or I think that what I'm going to do with one of these the dog ones, and I think this one versus this one, because they're all pointed the same direction, and I like the randomness. And I am going to make a little dog um, feeding, a little feeding mat. And I'm going to go ahead and cut out some um, paws, probably these right here, and then stick them to that mat, 
to the water mat. And now I like that none of these now are touching. I wouldn't want that when I'm cutting them out. And I would make these, I would go ahead and ex expand this and take a look and make sure there's a good enough cutting space in between all of them. And, um, or I, I, I could see if I lined, lined these up on um, a piece of vinyl and I cut them out in a line and I'm trying to place them on that mat, I'm just, I, I, especially once they're stuck on, I'm not going to be happy with it. I'm going to think, oh, these two are too close together. I'm not good at that. So I am definitely going to cut these out of a vinyl and then use that to stick on to my, um, to my dog's water mat. And that way I see what I see on the screen I like. I don't have to worry about sitting there and trying to place them and then saying these are too close, they don't match. Uh, this is just to me the way to go. I might even take and put one more down right here. And this to me is just the best thing to do. And I like that it went um, in the in the the shape. Even though it's you can't tell that this is a heart shape, you just know that it is from when you put it on there. I'm going to go ahead and click all this. I'm going to group it and save it because I am going to make a dog mat out of this heart. And that'll be just perfect because I can put a, um, a food bowl here, a water bowl here, and then she can stand right here. So that's just perfect for what I want. Now, the other thing to do, and I'm only going to show one more, and then um, it'll I'll have more in the next video. So I'm going to go ahead and do another heart. I'm going to go to my sketch screen. I'm going to click on just the lines. Oh, before I do the lines, I want to. Um, I'm going to make turn this into a convert to path. I'm going to make this smaller, fill it with lines, release effects. Now I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to release compound path. And now I could do, um, now I could do these little paw prints this way. Get my grab handles. I'm going to put them right here and now I'm going to get more of them across the whole thing. Now one of the things here I want to be mindful of, this heart, when you do something that has a shape like this where it goes out and in, um, I'm going to have, I'll show you over here, Th this line right here, if I was putting something on this line, I can't have it be straight because this is going to, to curve in. So what I want to do is make sure that I have it here. And if something goes out that direction underneath, that's just fine. But I want to make sure that I'm not putting anything past this point right here. And this is fine down here, but not that one. So when I'm making these, I want to make sure that this light right here, and I can see already that it's past that. So I want to have it be within this this here and it's all going to even out because when I put a border because I'm going to have a border around this um, it will still maintain the shape and that means that over here it's a little too um, get my and so I think I'm going to put less of them here and maybe closer together I can also delete any that are inside. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and keep that right there and at the end I'll delete this one. So I'm going to go get my replicate screen. I grab handles and down here it should say release copies. And now I can take that one away. And I'll use it for the next line. Now I'll show the grab handle. And I'll go over and I'll do the same thing with this line right, right here. I'm going to make more. And again, making sure I don't go too far past that side. 
and I'm going to have fewer of them. And I have one, two, three, four, five there, one, two, three, four, five here. So I'm going to release those copies. And now this is, um, now I can just go all the way down and get myself a whole heart that's filled. And it's not going to be random like this. These now will be, uh, my, well, I'll, I'll show you on my next one. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a copy of this. <clears throat> and what I would do is also when I start, I would make sure that I get, several copies however many lines I have I would want to make sure I have that many of these little paws or stars or whatever shape it is that I'm using get my grab handle come down this one has a break too it's the last one with a break <coughs> unless I decide to do something um, up above it I think that looks good. Now see, this here will go out, so I don't have to worry about that. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I want one more here. I'm going to move them out some, give myself a gap there, release copies, and now I would just go through this whole heart and do the whole thing. Clear down to probably just, um, have another pop up there, no. I'd probably just end with one right here. Might pull it in a little bit so that it matches up with that. And then I would put my edging, my border here. And um, um, I, I could have these be like, I could have these be um, right below each other, or I could have them staggered. Looks like this is more staggered. I think I would do them staggered. In fact, I did only the, um, every other line. If I did every line here, well, first of all, they wouldn't fit in there. But, yeah, I think I would do, redo these and have it be, maybe I'll just go ahead and click on them. And pull them over so that they're, oh, get that one. And pull them over so that they're kind of in the middle of each one. And then move this one to, um, well, I moved the, line two. Pull that back out. Hmm. I, I think I had it right the first time. But anyway, you get the idea. I um, have a lot more to go over, including making a mandala. I'm going to just go through here real quick and show you some of the other things I'm going to do in the next video. Um, creating these little flowers in a heart using another method. Um, making your own mandala. I did this one is butterflies inside of this butterfly. This will be a card. This is going to have stars all within the, um, and then I'm go also going to put text within this and have it keep the shape of the star. Um, this one I'm going to make a butterfly for, uh, for the 4th of July. I did, the this one ha is going to be um, sublimation, and this is a base, you can see, and it just has little random baseballs inside. I didn't like the way that it placed them, it kind of placed them in these little groupings, so I'm going to just go and redo this, but as you can see, this is the one that goes back and forth, and it zigzags across, so I'm just going to make sure that these are um, within the zigzag sections, like right here, and I'm just going to go in and redo this. I'm going to move it out of the way right here. And pick one. I could show you real quick. Um, let me get my grab handle. 
and see the, what you can do with this. You can kind of like, like I guess I liked that right there. Um, I didn't like that it, I like, I, it's funny because I like the bottom for this part right there, and then I like the top like that. So what I'm going to do, one of the things you can do, and again, I'm going to address that more in the next video, is you can make a little cut. And if you make a little cut in here, say right here. Now, when I do the um, grab handles, it's not going to go past that. It's not going to go past where I have the cut. So now when I fill this, I'm going to get, um, I'm going to be able to have my two separate choices. I'm going to go over here and have my section length cover that whole part there. My start position um, up there. And that's where my cut is, right there. So this is where this the top of this is, right there at the, the, that cut line. And so now I'm going to have less of them because they're really crowded. So I'll have less. And I don't mind hand placing some of those. I'm going to release copies. And now I'll take another one and do the grab handle. And I'll go to this section. And this will go all the way to the bottom and right to the cut. <clears throat> and that just lets me have a little bit more control if I cut it up into the um, pieces that I want then I just have more control over where these are, how many there are, like that's kind of neat, that was kind of neat, that um, like right there. And then I could go ahead and cut and get the ones inside of here. And so anyway, this is using the um, sketch tools to create paths for your um, to for your um, replications. And I just think it's a really fun tool. I really like this. I didn't notice that before. I'm probably going to try to duplicate that for the bottom section too, where they just go randomly. And then um, I fill this in so that you can tell that it's a base, like like over here. But um, now this one here, I think I went through all of them. This here is a, a butterfly for my son. I'm making this for a pillow for my daughter. Uh, this is a memorial butterfly. And uh, so you can wrap text around these things too. And uh, watch for my next video. It'll probably be out this week. Um, because I'm going to try to keep the flow of the um, of this using the sketch uh, uh, for uh, paths. So thank you for watching.